Hey, hey, system coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, on the road to glory. Yes, this time I'm just gonna say it faster than usual. Ha, caught you off guard there. Welcome to the series, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. The new season and the championship has started off incredibly well, and we are working our way towards the Premier League. We have had a few. Uh, a few transfers coming in into the team this season as you guys know as the new players and the fresh players in the squad had us lean on pre-contract Oliveira the record signing of the club to support Davis in the midfield Tarin on a on a uh, pre-contract as well Griffiths from the free agents and then we have Begin from the free agents as well who is absolutely ridiculous in his stats and apparently has better shooting stats then uh, Ferreira, he has 78 finishing, Ferreira has 76, wow, that is actually true, you guys actually caught that, he has better shooting stats than our striker, who has scored over 50 goals in the last season, so very impressive by Begin right there, but guys, thank you for tuning in as always, and of course, uh, go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are new, that would be very much appreciated, man, because we're trying to reach 300,000 subscribers, and around 34, 35% of the people that watch my videos aren't even subscribed, so because become one of those that is subscribed welcome to the family if i might say so and turn on notifications please 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 do that that is very important now guys there is a comment in the last episode that is coming in from cs mike and he says fun fact late in orient episode one is the fourth fastest first episode on your channel to reach 100k viewers since fifa 19 for that thank you Genuinely, thank you, because this Road to Glory, it was a pilot episode, so to say, the pilot first season. I wanted to see how things go, and you guys have just been incredible on this series. The dedication of you guys to watch this every single day is actually sick. Thank you for that, man. Now, there's another comment coming in, though, from Kodrut Gabriel, and he says, You said you would upgrade skill moves if the dribbling stats are above a number. Begin has 80. You should go for three-star skill moves, if not uh, four at 82. Now, again, guys... I have now written down the rules so we have this on a piece of paper at all times. After getting to 50 dribbling, you get 2 star skill moves. After you get to 65 dribbling, you get 3 star skill moves. After you get to 82 dribbling, you get 4 stars and once you surpass the 90, you get the 5 star skill moves. Those are the rules on the road to glory and they are very similar to the ones that we had on the Newcastle career mode and I genuinely think that's the right way to do it. Now, what am I going to do? I'm going to go through the team, check out who actually has lower skill moves than he should have and change it immediately. Oh boy, Ferreira, he has... He has two star skill moves. Immediately we're seeing it. He has 70 dribbling. That means he should be a three star skill move player. So exactly that is what I'm talking about. He is going to be changed now. So I've just gone through the entire team, guys. And the only player that needed an upgrade in his skill moves was Ferreira, as I mentioned just before. So Ferreira now has the three star skill moves. I actually don't know what kind of difference it makes when you moved from two star skill moves to three star. But I do know that one of those chops that you do is um, only uh, is a three-star skill move. And the Ronaldo chop apparently is a three-star skill move this year as well. So those are the skills that Ferreira now could use to his advantage. Now, sadly, Clay, his transfer has broken down, guys. Uh, we will not be able to um, continue growing him, uh, continue to sell him, not growing him. What am I talking about? I wanted to sell him, of course. We started off into a season with two games, one draw, one loss, and now we're up against Wigan. The opponents in the last season that just wouldn't stop chasing us down right until the end of the season, and they had an unbelievable season last season as well. Now, let's take a look at where they're standing at the moment. Wigan is not up there. They are down there on 14th with three points, so only one point behind us they want to prove themselves in the championship and we cannot allow to be that example that they use so we are going to be trying to jump into this game with Oliveira on his first match for Leighton Orient as the CDM in this squad I'm looking forward to see what he can do hopefully Oliveira will come up with a great performance again against Wigan in our first match today let's do it by the way I saw a couple of people talking about the fact that um, the home kit should always be red for Leighton Orient and um, this season guys I'm absolutely in love with the kits I don't think there should be a set rule of doing a spe doing specific things but if you guys really want to next season when we do get into the Premier League we will be picking 
picking up a red kit. I will be looking through some of the historic Leighton Orient kits um, and then uh, deciding which type of design I want. Or you guys, as always, can send me some suggestions on Twitter. If you are a graphics designer and you have an idea for a kit, go ahead and inform yourself how to um, produce kits on FIFA 20 and then send me the design and I'm all up for using them. All three kits that we're using this season are from actual fans of the series. So that is a beautiful. Now, five goals in the last three matches for Ferreira. Now he has even improved in his skill moves let's see what he can do but of course the main man that we want to see play today is Lucas Oliveira let's see if he was worth all that money that we spent on him oh actually his name is Iago Oliveira I don't know how I came up with Lucas Oliveira uh, the, the, the players feel a bit slow today for whatever reason what a ball by Davis Ferreira is through already Ferreira look at that Five goals in three matches for a reason. Look at what he does to defenses, man. They just can't stop him. Four people surrounding him, and the AI is just not capable. We get it into Davis now. Far side, I see someone making a run. It is going to be on goal. And goal nearly scoring there early on into the match. We do put the pressure on Wigan. They know exactly how good we are. Last season, we proved it to them. This season, I want to do it again. Oh, there goes Ferreira. Ferreira, look at him go, look at him go, man. He's just having fun. I love it. Jesus just tries to get some goals in for the team, man, and he will continue to try in the upcoming minutes. At some point, we should be scoring with some of these lads. We get into Oliveira. Can he shoot from outside the box? Ooh, that would have gone in. That would have gone in. Oh, no, that's a bad pass, though. Oliveira right there to pick it up and continue the attack. Plays it into Davis. That's exactly what I'm looking forward to doing this season. And goal! Yes! And goal! He's there. He scores. Championship. League 1. League 2. It doesn't matter. He will continue to score. Jesus Ferreira with the pass. And on goal. With the strength and the composure to put it into the back of the net. Once again, the man with over 50 goal contributions last season has done it again he gets through scores his goals absolutely beautiful stuff from lee angol number 19 as always he has kept it true to himself and of course did you see how the attack started Yago Oliveira gets the ball passes it into davis Davis brings it into the strikers and we score and that's exactly what i want to see from Oliveira. i want him to be that guy that picks up the ball and plays it into Davis and then we start our attacks and this is another one of those. This is another one of those but I try to get it across a bit too light. Oh. Oh no! Yes, Bennett! Crucial, crucial save right there from Bennett. He does it for the team. That was very much necessary. Bennett keeping that clean sheet for now. A big save against our rivals from the last season. That's what we want to see. And Griffiths seems like a quite tall lad actually defending very well on that corner. You know what I'm thinking, man? If we can grow Griffiths pro properly, we could be playing Wagner as a center midfielder. We all have been talking about this for quite some time. Even in like League 1, I think we talked about this. Or maybe even in League 2. Um, we said that Wagner has the perfect stats for a center midfielder. And... I think that might be an opportunity in the future that we might have to explore. Once um, Angol isn't good enough anymore, like once we get into the Premier League, having a 70 rated striker is not going to be good enough. So maybe what we do is we switch to like a 4 2 3 1 formation, put Davis into Cam, and move Wagner from the right back spot into the centre midfield. I think that would be a very good thing to do because I genuinely think Wagner has better stats for the centre midfield position than he does for the right back spot. So that might be something that we look into in the future. Let me know in the comments down below, guys, what you think about the Premier League plans of mine. Haraslin harassing our opponents. Ha ha ha. Good joke. I'm conceding. I'm conceding. That joke was so bad that I had to concede. I had to punish myself. Number 19 scores for Leighton Orient and number 19 scores for Wigan Athletic. I messed up big time. Haras Lin harassing his opponents. I mean, what are you doing, Johnny? Just freaking play the game. Stop making jokes. I really want to win this game, and I kind of have a feeling that later on in this game, Begin will be coming in as a substitute and doing something. Because if I gotta be honest, Haras Lin doesn't stand out yet. Like, he's a good player, but he doesn't have that standout thing where he's constantly on the ball. 
and Begin when we subbed him in. He was all that we were seeing. So uh, might have to think about that in the future. But let's not disregard the fact that Halasleen has some really good stats on him. And he is higher rated. So he does technically deserve to play in a starting lineup. Halasleen again into the middle. Wow, he really has some sick passing on him. I, I really like that. Like his passing is extremely consistent. Here goes Davis with some space. Davis against the defender. Davis, he's going, he's going. And then I messed it up. I shouldn't have done the Berba spin. I should have just taken the shot. Big mistake by myself there. It's going to be Slavchev playing it through now. Oh, this could be dangerous. If they play the right pass, this could be very dangerous. But Collins defends extremely well. And here we go on the counter with Ferreira. Jesus, come on, Jesus. Bring it back into Angol. Angol for the second. Angol for the second. Get in. 69th minute or let's say 70th. It is Angol who scores again. He just wants to prove that he's good enough. He just wants to let us know. You can count on me. It's not all about Ferreira. Don't forget about Angol. He is or was the main striker in the first season that even got us into this place and in the second season he had probably an even better season and still was chasing down Ferreira this season man it's gonna be proving to be a fight once again between those two for the top scorer spot obviously Ferreira has the massive advantage of the speed to get in behind but in that case we saw clearly what those two can do in terms of damage to the defense of our opponents it was yet again another assist for Ferreira, which is one of his strengths. He had the most assists last season. Actually, no, Angol picked him up right towards the end of the season. But um, it is showing once again what Ferreira can do in terms of assisting as well, which is always good to see. You don't want your strikers to be very selfish. Yes, of course, you want them to be selfish once they are like in a 1v1 situation. You want them to just focus on goal and take the shot. But you also want them to see your teammates making runs and stuff. 75th though, now it's time to make those changes that could have a big impact. Haraslin is moving to the right. Cook is coming off because he seems tired. Begin comes in. And then we're going to bring on Miyoshi who had an exceptional performance in the last episode for Oliveira. And uh, I think I'm going to go for Morais instead of Davis because I want to strengthen my midfield to keep a hold of the ball a little bit longer. Oh, this could be a goal. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Why not, dude? Why not? Why would you not take a shot from outside the box on a volley and smash it into the top bins? That is the most ridiculous goal I have conceded on FIFA 20. I cannot believe that Joe Williams has scored that goal against me just now. Um. Yeah. Angol. Ooh, Angol. He's actually running through after kickoff. Angol onto his left foot. Get it in. Oh, unlucky. I thought we could get an immediate reaction from our team. Oh, Miyoshi. Miyoshi, we know what he can do. We know what he can do. He can get the ball into Ferreira. Get in. Where is Joe Williams? Where is he? I think he's up there, isn't he? No, I wanted to shush him. Come on, bro. He can score the goal of the season. It doesn't matter. It is Ferreira who will get the goal after Miyoshi just gets completely destroyed. <laughs> Did you see Miyoshi? Please. I beg. Look at that replay when he just falls down. It's like his life is over. <laughs> I need to show you that. <laughs> That just felt like it was like a little kid that was so happy to get involved in playing football with the big boys. And then once he gets into the game, he just gets completely crushed. <laughs> Look at him just sat down. He's like contemplating life right now. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny to me. But man, Miyoshi, you just got destroyed by Williams. But hey, it was worth it. No, oh, no, Griffiths is not fast enough to catch up to these. It's 3-3. We can come back again. It's 3-3. What a game. My defense is an absolute shambles. Ever since Wagner has left us, guys, this team has not been able to defend. It's actually ridiculous how bad we are at defending at this stage. We do get a free kick, though, in the 86, and it should be a yellow card, but the referee decides, no, we don't want to give a yellow card because we are a Wigan fan. Um, uh, let's bring this ball into 
Begin again. He has that finishing that I might need. Begin. He's running through. Begin. Cuts inside. Come on. Get it in, son. Yes. Begin. Let's go. He did it. The young talent did it in the 88th minute. What a game. What a game. Begin cuts inside. Takes his time. Shows the composure. Shows the finishing of 79 on himself. A quality finish into the near post. Didier Begin has done it. And a lot of people are just complaining already. Untuck his shirt and stuff like that. By the way, what kind of shoe color are we going to give players that we signed this season? I need a new shoe color, guys. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to look into the, sh the shoe colors right now. Myself after this game as well. But this is a ridiculous result against Wigan. I am very, very satisfied to see Angol score twice, Ferreira get two assists and a goal, and of course, seeing Begin come in and just getting that goal in. Wow, just exceptional, exceptional from that young talent. We can't let them score another time though. There we go, Collins with the most important tackle of the season so far. It is the O's coming away with another three points after an eventful game, if I might say so. Wigan are still strong. This just proves to be a season where it's just going to be tight every time. We have conceded goals in every match, I believe. We might have conceded some of the most goals this season, actually, after three games. We need to improve our defense. Wagner is needed so here it is i'm gonna start off with griffiths guys uh, we're gonna change him up immediately uh, of course you guys always want it to be untucked so don't you worry and i'm thinking these guys we might give green how about green because we've already given the blue we've already given the pink i think green is a color that stands out as well so we could go with something like that but i'm not really seeing any greenish shoes actually these ones are proper green um, we do have some blue on the side as well. Maybe these ones? Nah, not too happy with them ones. Mm, what is that? Yikes, that looks awful. That really looks terrible. Give me something else green. Nike? I like Nike. You know, like lime. It's not really green, is it? But lime works as well. I think I'm going to go with the lime, but these shoes look dirty for whatever reason. They just look dirty. Is it just me? Or do they look dir dirty? No, it's just the text on it and stuff, the texture. All right, we're going to go with the Nike Phantoms for now on the young talents that come in this season. Also, there's another comment right here from Nikki, and he says, you should look up the youth players that you sold at the end of the career mode to see their overall and stuff. Like so Johnny can see. Yes, that, I think that's a really good idea because I kind of want to know how these young talents have done that we have sold on. Now, obviously, we're kind of coming up against Millwall right here. Millwall currently in what position are they in at the moment millwall is in the 13th position leeds united in ninth um i'm gonna go into this game by just simulating it of course anytime in the next few weeks wagner should be back and then our team should be doing much better defensively nothing against griffiths but he is obviously quite low rated so he can't quite handle what is going on in these episodes um we're gonna go through this game against Millwall by conceding early on in the first minute. And once again, it just shows the weakness in our defense. Angoldo continuing his great form in that last match and he gets himself a goal. I really hope Ferreira can step it up as well. Normally, both of them score if we do play matches. Angol actually gets two. Impressive stuff from the old man. <laughs> I mean, he is one of the oldest players. And then Davis comes in as well. Millwall have been beaten by two goals of Angol and one from Davis. Very nice to see our team succeed away from home, which is obviously a very, very tough thing to do. And the O's are sat at the top of the league table. A bunch of teams actually have the chance to overtake us because they haven't played a game yet. And we do get our first scout updates guys the first two scout updates of the season here it goes on the 19th that is a number that we have to keep in mind this guy looks terrible this guy looks awful this guy looks even actually he has a worth of 325k so we can keep him around and this guy has 110k arsen kamara the only player right now that looks interesting from the physically strong um, scouting in the Ivory Coast. This one is from Brazil looking for technically gifted players. This guy has a worth of 400,000, so could be potentially a good player. 
Ah, oh, man, it said 50 to 72. I got hyped. I thought for a second that Alex Coinsessao would be a decent player to have, but sadly, he only has 275 on his value, which just tells us that he's nowhere near good enough. Carlos Lintz, the only one that we're going to sign today, and we're going to take a look at his, st at his stats immediately. Carlos Lintz, show me what you got. Where is he? Carlos Lintz. That's the name that we're looking for. There he is. 56 rated, 58 to 86 potential. Obviously not the highest potential, but definitely someone that we can sell on in the future. And he's only 14, so two years of growing in the youth academy will be doing him some good. Uh, and uh, now, you guys know, we have 8 million still to spend, and I'm looking to spend it. Blackburn, though, up next, and I want to see what type of result we can get against this team as well. Can our team continue the great form that we have been on? I really wish that for simulations you could pick substitutes ahead of time so the game kind of prefers to make those substitutes on goal by the way might have just caught up to the goal tally of Ferreira I'm just saying we might have to take a look at that in just a second but it just seems like it's a battle for those two already Ferreira I need you to step up you haven't scored in the last game get one now Ferreira become the hero oh no on goal again oh boys Angol is carrying the team right now. 2-2. Blackburn. Good result. At home, we're struggling. We're conceding way too many goals. And there it is. There is that message that I've been waiting for. Jens Wagner is back. Get in. Oh, man, it's been long. It's been a long time, Wagner. I've been needing you for some time now. And finally, our defense will improve once again. Very happy with this. I think we need to keep it this way around because Collins has that five-star weak foot. But... Man, oh man, Wagner, we have missed you. And of course, you are the captain, my friend. Oh, captain, my captain, he's back. And of course, when you play well, you ask for more play time. Begin now wants to play more, otherwise he's not going to be too happy. <sighs> I don't know what to do here. I'm just going to tell him I'll consider it. He's not happy, man. He's just not happy about not playing all these games. And I think he deserves to play as well. He did really well. Haraslin is a great player, but we might have to drop him for now unless we start losing games. I think for the next one or two games, we're going to play Begin and see how he does in the starting lineup. And then we're going to move on into Haraslin once again. But that is a Carabao Cup match against Sunderland. And I think this is the perfect time to go and look for the backup striker for this career mode. Let's do it. Okay, guys, I've now looked through a couple of teams uh, and i've just found one guy who looks quite interesting and it is mender garcia who we had on the uh, transfer list already alec benro doesn't have a release clause anymore none of these players that we have in here have a release clause so we don't kind of know what these what these guys can do now this guy has something on him speed dribbler oh, this was lana that was um interesting for us at the beginning but we will not be able to afford him i think now 4.3 mil for Mender Garcia should be good. We're looking into his stats and you can see that physically he seems to be very good. And that's exactly what I need as a super sub. I don't need anyone who is exceptional in like dribbling and all of that good stuff. I need someone that can just force his way through the defense. And Garcia seems to be the right person for that. We're going to be paying his release clause. I don't know what his rating is. And I'm hoping that this guy turns out to be a good one. So we are looking for that backup striker and Garcia would be the one. Now, let's see what we can do in terms of the deal. I am quite excited to see if we can get him involved. He's currently playing at Greuther Fürth. Um, I'm going to offer him important. Is he going to be happy with that? He, oh, no, he wants to be important, not rotation. Sorry, I chose the wrong one there, I think. But he wants important and that is good because we don't want him to be playing every single game. And we will need him as a substitute. He's 22 years old. Let's offer him a five-year contract. Is he going to accept that? Yes, he is. Mender Garcia is interested. And he only wants 2.8k in his wages. After 10 goals, he wants 41k. That's fine, dude. Mender Garcia has now joined the O's. Can this guy take over and goal his position? Can he do it? That is going to be a question we will have to ask ourselves in the future, but not right now. Angol is the undisputed king of this team. 
and we just needed a backup and it looks like a really good backup as you guys can see we don't have a single striker as a backup so it was very much necessary 22 years old 5 foot 11 tall striker with medium medium work rates 3 stars 3 star on him and let's take a look into the pace 82 acceleration 88 sprint speed 76 stamina which is good to see 79 strength which i really appreciate composure isn't the best it's 55 what does angol have 59 so angol has improved in that category how about ferreira ferreira has 67 that just shows as well a lot of times when he's taking shots He's a bit more calm than Angol, but he does look very good physically. In terms of his finishing, he has 74 and 80 shot power. Angol has 67 and 71 shot power, but you can see what he does with it. He knows exactly what he can do and what he cannot do. Angol is just aware of his abilities and Garcia now joining into the team very happy with that we needed a backup striker and we have found ourselves one that was very much necessary for today's episode guys I think we have made the right choice and in terms of how the players are doing so far I'm gold <laughs> 10 goals in 10 matches with one assist. Ferreira, six goals and four assists. He has 10 goal contributions. He has 11. And then Davis has six goals as well, but four of them in the preseason tournament. Ferreira has only scored in competitions away from the preseason tournament. Angol has actually scored three during the preseason tournament. So if we take that away, both of them are kind of on the same level at the moment. Miyoshi also quite impressive. He has played three games, got himself two goals and two assists. Very well done by Miyoshi and Begin. He has played three games and got himself two goals. We got to ask ourselves if Begin should be playing in the starting lineup and if we use Haraslin as someone to sell on in the future and make money because this guy just looks exceptional and he has proven us uh, that he can score in crucial moments and he does have the stats for it. So I'm all up for using Begin in a starting lineup from this point on. But guys, due to it still being a transfer window episode, there will only be one game in today's episode. We're gonna be, once we surpass the transfer window, as you guys know, we're gonna be going through the season a lot quicker. Next episode though, we're gonna be playing against Carabao. Actually, hold on, I wanted to lose, right? Sunderland, do it for me, please. I wanted to drop out of the Carabao Cup, so please beat me. Ferreira, what is it about you and scoring in the Carabao Cups? You, you need to explain this to me. Maguire scores for them. Very nice. I can't believe I'm actually cheering for my team to lose, but I really couldn't care less about the Carabao Cup. I want to focus on the season. So right here. Come on. Come on, man. Just take it away from me. Oh, no. Clay, what are you doing? Clay. Why are you scoring? I'm even... Yes, Grig. Good job. Penalties. We lost. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of the Carabao Cup, guys. The cup that absolutely no one cares about. And I don't know what's going on with my controller, but it's not working properly. Hello? Hello? There we go. Finally, it works. But, man, I'm glad that we dropped out of the Carabao Cup. And I think we are moving closer and closer to the transfer deadline day any moment. And once that happens, we, of course... Uh, oh, Clay has been sold. There we go. Finally. That worked out. Clay has given us a parting present with that goal that he scored. But Begin, no worries, man. You will be you'll be happy one day. Oliveira wants to play. That's okay. Anderson, uh, we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens, Anderson. I'm not too sure on letting you play, but I should probably involve Begin into this uh, into this team as well. So let's get him into the starting lineup of this one because otherwise he's just going to lose his mind. I'm going to put Lewis on the other side. I think that's probably the right thing to do. So that is going to be the reserves team from now on. And it's going to be Garcia instead of Ferreira. Ferreira needs to stop scoring, okay? <laughs> For once, Ferreira, I don't want you to score. How about that? And also, let's take away Tarin here and bring in Hape and Anderson for Collins, okay? That's how we're going to run the reserves team but yeah like i said that is it for today's episode thank you guys so much for watching the o's have brought in yet another signing and we have played an amazing game against wigan the o's currently in that fourth position with 11 points brentford cardiff and west brom ahead of us nottingham forest and millsbro as well those are going to be some big clashes in the upcoming episodes thank you for watching let me know what we should do with the remaining four million that we have in the club do we still need 
something else in this team someone else to come into this squad let me know guys thank you though so much for watching looking forward to seeing you on the next episode once again take care peace